now you have many audience that being very young also. And uh, it is my pleasure today to be as I am a newsletter today. And also, as you see from the panel title, uh, we have the, pipe, uh, the title is The Law of Asian Voice for the New Generation. Uh, I think uh, it is a very interesting one because as of now, from the morning session, we have talked about uh, the law of the US. Uh, about China and also the Asia Pacific, and especially in the terms of security issue, uh, or the traditional one to the new paradigm. And the more uh, interesting one is how the new generation will have a reaction to this issue. I think this panel will provide and uh, give a good opportunity to open the room to discuss uh, in this section. So, we're going to start now. Okay. Uh, for the first question is, uh, I would like to ask Professor Gandhi uh, about how do you identify the new generation now? Uh, are there any topics or, or, or challenging things that should be focused on? Pleasure so indeed. New generation is from my age below. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at the... <laughs> And the oldest new two, new generations here. Well, basically, no. Well, I don't. I we don't really have to classify the age range. I rather see more like um, um, the perceptions, awareness, and how we're ready to you know to adapt to change in those in, in this coming fast you know, fast changing world. Yes, um, if we talk about the gener new generation, we would automatically think about those um, students, new university, and new grads, you know, things like that, who are what I wish I believe, according to my research, they're going to be most affected or will have to adapt to the change much more than our generation or anything you know, above. Um, yes, what we see, well, we, we, we talked about the Gen X. Oh, are we Gen X? Oh, yeah. Well, some of us are baby boomers already, and uh, Gen X, Gen Y, and now we talk about Gen Gen Z, Gen Z, or Gen M, or the millennials, or those people who are actually uh, were born after the year 2000. But uh, I want to summarize that new generation is anyone who, who whoever are going to take the challenge up ahead. I don't I don't care about the age range, but I will see. But the majority will be around those people, people in the university, new grads, and the, uh, you know the, those age below. And the second qu second question that you raised about um, what was the second question? Sorry. Uh, what about the challenging part? Oh, okay. The challenge, right? Well, I have summarized. Well, I got a chance um, in, in, uh, in the past year, you know, work with um, not work with work for um, the UNDP and the NESDB of the country, trying to identify the key factors that would happen and that would affect that, that would affect a uh, majority of the of the new the, the new generations. So what we need to be prepared right in this head, um, or the challenge that we need to um, to be prepared for. Seven things that I said, more like a, it's a major social factors. Number one, well, it's an influx of the foreign direct investment, which which going to change a lot in terms of the society and the cultural mix, and that bring about the job opportunities as well as um, the job competitions. <laughs> Second is uh, urbanizations and migrations in ASEAN. Well, I wanted to say that we see a lot of um, the, the city expanding, and more and more cities coming in, and um, and, and and also the um, the migration both. Um, um, uh, international and also inter-ASEAN, which I see that we're going to get even more and more um, prominent uh, when the time goes. The rise of ASEAN middle class, if we're rich, would change the, uh, the whole landscape of how we consume the products and how we produce a product. The fourth one is expansion of social media. We all know about that. The fifth one is a green ASEAN that has become the aging society. And the number six, women advancement that will we get more in terms of the active role uh, politically, um, in the business wise, and all kinds. And also, the last but not least, the which I paid the most um, attention to it, which is a culture correlations. When you have you have to live in the living in a, a diversified cultures at the same time. So that will bring in the um, the challenge. I wouldn't I wouldn't say this is more like a threat, but more the challenge that we need to change in terms of the new generations. Uh, we talked about the borderless career opportunities, and we're going to leave it as a as a more like topic. We're going to discuss later um, the wave of internationalizations, 
The third one is uh, the, the fast growing technology, and at the same time, you're talking about the fast obsolete, the te technology obsolete. What we learned today uh, by the first year in university is likely to be outdated by you reach the third year. So that is a challenge that I need to keep, to, uh, keep learning. And um, <coughs> last but not least, we talk about the new opportunity of emerging occupation and all others. So these are a couple of things that as a challenge that I see at this moment. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I would like to uh, share my teaching experience in the private university. Dr. Karadi is teaching in the public university, so uh, for um, my behalf, I would like to uh, share my student views on ASEAN in the private university. So here it is. They don't care. <laughs> okay? Um, that's, that's my experience and that's my only thing that I want to show you. As a director of the ASEAN study, my student, 99% of my students, don't even know we have the center. You know, uh, the, the, the challenging uh, factor for Thai people now is how to stimulate or how to uh, create the awareness of ASEAN and the new opportunities and I uh, commend this event and especially uh, the, the young generation of the Think Tank Institute as uh, SIU that they keep trying to uh, push this uh, issue on and on and on. And uh, my second point for, uh, for my uh, presentation, I just want to show you this picture from the uh, Matishon Weekly. Uh, how do we, how do some of Thai people uh, think of ASEAN, you know? This is the uh, political com comic. It is like a, in a, some kind of international official event where all the leaders shake hands and the Thai leader who happened to be a female, the, the first female Thai leader, you know, in Thai history, she has to wear a Thai dress to be able to show that, you know, you're, you're a good Thai leader among international events. You know, when she went to uh, Korea and she took a picture of uh, the famous one billion viewer actors from Korea, you know, Sai, many of us condemn her of acting inappropriately. But when the, U when the UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon took a picture of dancing the Gangnam style, you know, many Thais said, wow, that's cool. <laughs> so it's the problem that some issue that I, I cannot even speak here. You all know what issue. Uh, the issue of freedom of expression, freedom of idea, freedom of things. You know, do you know who leads Thailand? Who's the real leader of Thailand? Is this, is this the lady or the army chief? The army chief who can control what content could be on the news. And even today, the army chief and the defense minister said, you, the media, has too much freedom on reporting whether it be a security issue or any issue that they don't like you to report. Um, touching on the ASEAN issue just a little bit more, only uh, one minute. Uh, the, my ASEAN hero for a very little uh, uh, article here showing that Burma, the leader is you know, the hero is Aung San Suu Kyi, no doubt. 
uh, for Vietnam, the leader is Ho Chi Minh, who is the godlike personality. And for the lady in the front, I have to address her because she's from the Embassy of Philippines. But I don't know this person. Uh, his name, or her, his name is Jose Rizzo. But what, what is the hero or the actor or the voice for the you know new generation or whatever generation? <clears throat> Think about it. In Thailand, we don't really have that. We have, you know, former Prime Minister Abhisit who's never been into the military, has still has a problem with the military. Uh, we have Thaksin Shinawat, who is, you know, accusedly corrupt. We have this uh, sister of Thaksin, and perhaps the next prime minister would be a clan of Thaksin. So after, let's say, 30 years ago, we don't really have uh, the real hero or the real voice for ASEAN. Uh, for academic side, the official ASEAN uh, policy for Thai government is to promote and develop relationships with neighboring country, with our neighboring countries. I'm translating from Thai to English simultaneously, and to enhance uh, economics, investment, commerce, tourism, blah blah blah. Just one chapter out of 66 pages. And now what are we doing? We are debating if we need two million million transportation mode. Why the current one is still in deep, I'm sorry for my uh, trouble language, deep shit is in the revenue loss for 30 more years <coughs> for the uh, railway translation since the King Rama the fifth. But for my uh, experience teaching in the private universities, how to use uh, this kind of venue and reach out to the most of the Thai people, because think about it, uh, the prestigious university as Jula Thammasat, they only carry, let's say, not more than 10% of the uh, Thai undergrads in the whole nation. So I'm carrying all the majority of the you know, middle class and all the people who's very, very much affected by the ASEAN integration. So that's, that's, my, uh, that's my share, and thank you. Thank you, Attorney Kachai. How about the one last person left can survive in your university? <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, so, as you are the member of the Thai Navy, so my question is, how about the new generation should have the perspective on the security? Because I think some of the new generation, as as an said, don't care about security at all. Thank you very much. Um, uh, I consider myself as the very old generation comparing to the others. But uh, I do understand what the new generations think because I have two, old, uh, two daughters, 10 years old and 4 years old, and uh, I get on with them very well. That's why I got the iPad and a lot of games in here. Very fun. Uh, I really you know, love sharing ideas, playing with them you know, on the iPad. And I think this is the uh, represent one kind of generation's characteristic. Uh, let's talk about security. If I'm asking, or perhaps less than 25 years old, not within the security sector, do you care about security? Yes, the answer is will be. No, I don't care. I don't know about security. Is it a surprise? No, not at all. No surprise at all. If, if they do care about security, I'm going to be very surprised, and I'm going to be very worried about it. Because this is, I think we are still living in a peaceful country. And the peaceful country means that your people don't care about security. They have money to pay, they have school to go, they have food to eat. And this is our role of military to take care of them. 
Yes, sometimes it might be so-called overprotected. But we still are very proud of carrying them. They're living in a very good society. Okay. Uh, someone might, well, they just, nothing. No, uh, I don't think so, you know. But if I going to talk about there's some incident about security, for example, the piracy incident in, in the Malacca Strait about about the maritime terrorism, about the natural disaster, about even South China Sea incident. I think the majority of our young generation are going to be not knowing about this. Except Perhaps in the morning news, very interesting news, it's all about the North Korea going to attack the South Korea, and it's going to interest our young generation because they do care about it, K-pop, right? <laughs> uh, and, and, and I think this is just running around naturally. You know, as the old generation or the young generation are bridging with understanding each other, and so on. If you ask me about what kind of a generation should we care about security? I said, maybe no. Okay, unless we have just you know get into the situation that we can call crisis or a very strong competitiveness in terms of security, which is I'm going to tell you that Thailand nowadays uh, is a situation of very, very challenging on the security <coughs> issues. Um, First of all, yes, we all know about the southern Thailand. But because of they just occur in the southern part, very far from the center of the Thailand, Bangkok. And so, you know, they can this is still in the news. Okay. Unless it's just, you know, moving up upward, you know, to Bangkok. That that part is we are still very conscious about it. And how about the South China Sea? I was asked by one of the audience, or two, yes. How about Rio Tani? You ready for engaging the South China Sea crisis? Uh, I said, yes. And be very worried about the situation, you know, because the raw military is to be prepared and ready for engaging the crisis. And if we're talking about the situation tomorrow, we're going to be prepared like very two or three years ago. And the South China Sea, you know, is developing in, in the situation is very rapidly. And real time is kind of pretty tense, you know, if one day, like I'm dirty upset, like one day, if it's the time that ASEAN going to become together, yes, it's just a one kind of optimistic scenario. If ours is going to become one, taking the issues together, and that time, the real time is going to be, you know, into that situation. And it's going to be very, very difficult situation to engage, you know, with those kind of environment that we're not so familiar with. And during that time, I believe that we're going to start to know that you know, all the products on the shelf, 80% of that going to disappear from the 7-Eleven. Think about that. And, um, and if that's, that, that time comes, our new generation is going to be realized how important the security is. And I, I wish you could you know, just think about it today. Thank you. Well, we all agree uh, before we uh, have this talk that if you want to uh, just immediately ask a question, please uh, feel free to do so. And 
anyone can uh, just interact or interject in the conversation. Um, personally, I think the, the blame for the new generation not caring about ASEAN is, the, uh, is my generation and it's the uh, lecturer fault, it's the uh, professor fault. You know, as a new university uh, employee, if you think that you know you got like statue or you got like you know everything uh, in your topic in the area, and that is not the case anymore. You have Google University, you have Wikipedia University. You know they don't care. They don't have to listen to me. I'm just a stupid employee who can work anywhere but teach. <laughs> right? This is only for me. You know, not for. Uh, Assistant Professor Dr. Gandhi, right? <laughs> but for uh, please please in the check. But for uh, for my experience, I sincerely uh, think that is the attitude of the uh, of the uh, teaching learning experience. You know? If you think that you know everything, like I right now, I'm think that, thinking that most of you know more about ASEAN, US, China, and whatever relationship more than me right that's why i ask i'm asking you please feel free to, to uh, interject if you have if you want to uh, debate or discuss uh, anything uh, let's say uh, take this one for example this this is very big news for thailand you know we have both the uh, us and the chinese uh, outgoing president visiting thailand within the same weeks uh, but the they cast this. What they what what they do care what they do cast this? Why our female prime minister has to smile so? You know, I I don't know the English word. Sweet. Too sweet, <laughs> right? Why you have to do this? But uh, if I can uh, translate this, uh, the the keyword for Obama, he said, democracy is dynamic. It's ongoing process. Wow, that's very nice. Uh, that's why the Prime Minister said, wow, thank you for that kind words. And what happened to her now? Whereas the, the uh, democracy issue, uh, I can find uh, the words democracy in ASEAN Charter more than five times. But what happened to democracy in Thailand? <laughs> are we going to stand up for democracy? If we, are the, if we are a democratic country, who let... I have to... Uh, watch my uh, video recording. <laughs> <laughs> Who let the army chief leave the topic, saying that he's uncomfortable, you know, with the uh, the TV shows about the issue of the monarch, the monarchy, and do you know what happened after that? Maybe you, Farang, uh, know or didn't know all the five. Uh, shows of the topic for the monarchy is already banned and disappeared from you too. Only by the uncomfortableness of the army chief of Thailand. So who's the real leader in this country? That's right. So I, I, I just told my student last night that I'm ashamed of my country to criticize on Burma. They free all the political prisoner. They open the press so much that you know even the Burmese are afraid of the, of the, the new openness. They have the new election. They seem to you know trying to get along. But what happened to you know Thailand? Oh, I know the answer. We have this coconut shell, you know, up, up above our head. So we cannot have NASA airplane landing at Utapau Airport. We don't like foreigners like you, the US, the EU telling us that Les Majesty is nothing to do with all of you except Thailand. And frankly speaking, we don't care. And can we can we live under that you know, attitude under ASEAN? You know, you know the answer. So please uh, I talk too much. Thank you. Oh, very interesting. Uh, when you talk about the neglect of the new generation in, uh, in learning news, 
question, we have to also question to the social structure about the openness of, of the, the old generation as well. You know, I, I am a lawyer and I teach international human rights and I strongly believe in the openness of free <coughs> and um, free debate. Right now, I'm ashamed to report that even you, the media, or the, the uh, official from the embassy know there's some issue that you can't talk. That's not a free and fair uh, debate for a democratic world. And if you can look in the ASEAN Charter, you know, we ASEAN, we try to copy the EU. They have Maastricht Treaty. We have ASEAN Charter. I find democracy words more than five times. But it's democracy in the ASEAN way. Uh, when, when, when we talk about borderless world of technology and like Gandhi, uh, what do you think that can we, can we back out from this situation that open more for the implementation by jumping to the new world of technology? They, are, they, are, they already are in the new world of technology. And those, um, when Ajahn, Ajahn A talks about YouTube was banned, I think that quite, quite, you know, a few days later. So most of them have been downloaded, but they're really interested. So the free of the, you know, information technology has been out there and, and has promoted, like I said, you know, the freedom of speech. We can see that on the Facebook and Twitter and now today. And we get to communicate with all those people, you know, across the, the continents without, with no problems. I think that, well, to me, it's a positive side, though. Most of people don't really like it because it's somehow just like you said, it can't control anymore. But to me, as a new generation, and, and, and we'll see it in the future on my head, I think that's a good idea. Back to the, the previous questions that Ajahn Chakri asked of the Ajahn A, uh, Ajahn A response about your students, what, what, what do they do? They don't know and they don't care, right? Oh, they care about this. Uh, this is my uh, third episode. <laughs> What, what, what happened to my country, ladies and gentlemen? Come on, come on, he's good looking. I, I like him. He's good looking. <laughs> he banks 30 million baht. Treat him with that respect. I like him. Uh, playing the <laughs> Japanese show, soldier who invade and conquer Thailand or Siam. But what would happen to him? He earned 40 million baht. If he showed this product, it will be 10 million. But if he put it this way, it will be 5 million. We just, you know, very, we are very romanticizing of, you know, fantasy countries. And we pick the good history and we choose not to uh, remember the bad one. We choose to forget about the, you know, you call it massacre in, in the downtown Bangkok t two years ago. Uh, in the legal term, it's very interesting. What happened in the South, you call, what do you call it? You cannot call it terrorism. You have, you have to call it civil unrest. You have to call it insurgent, right? Otherwise, it will reach to the international level of status. And now, the first time in the history, in the history of Thai or Siam, we actually acknowledge the peace dialogue to whoever Malaysia or you know, just only the BRN organization. This is the first time. And what, what do most, you know, majority of Thai people say? Oh, you can't believe him. He's a protege of Thaksin. He's the head chief of NSC, national chief, uh, national, uh, NSC, national chief uh, security council. So that's, that's, my, that's my view. What, what I was going to say when you say what people I don't know don't care. Um, well, I have to say that in general for the new gen, um, Thai especially, and, and many of the new gen in most of the country, when we talk about the perception of ASEAN, they're likely to have a, a, a positive attitude. Positive attitude. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, we're going to leave that. But most of them, once again, have a very limited knowledge about that. What we're going to do and what, 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 what we must adapt and what we should change. A couple of things that I see, um, this is for Thai students, so that I get a chance to talk to um, you know, students, parents, and uh, teachers in many fields. I put the new gen into three groups. Group number one, I said, well, don't bother to talk about become the ASEAN citizens in such and such, because since they were born, they have been prepared 
to become a global citizen, right? Those will of those will of students, you know, get into international schools since very young age, get very competitive, get into good school, good university. And when I talk to my students in other campus, I say, okay, I go, well, yeah, that's, it doesn't mean that I don't care, but I aim for, you know, work out there in Japan, the United States, and into in the, in the EU, things like that. So I think it just, it's okay. I don't feel bad about it. That's group number one, but it's very just a handful of the students. Group number two, which is um, if you look at the country as more like, um, you know, easy, over easy eggs, you know, in the border, um, around the border area, they've been living in, in a culture mixed environment. You know, the, the kids um, over Ubon, Kalukan, or, um, you know, in those areas, they've been living in a cultural mixed in a scenario environment. Don't bother about us because they understand by heart. They know that these people don't like that. They know that this is how we treat with the Burmese, this is how we treat with the Laotians and things like that. So those are fine too. But things in between that I'm a little more concerned, um, maybe uh, the group of students that Zhang just mentioned, they come to the mindset of do not know, don't know, don't care. When we don't know, and then they don't care. Once they don't care, they don't just don't care. They just shut them in and go against the internationalizations. That would be quite a roadblock for the future opportunities for them. And that leads to another mindset, which I believe that is more scary. When you don't know, when you don't care, and you shut it in, and you see everything as competitions. ASEAN, in the way, are you know was meant to be the area for the new collaborations of the world, not the competitions. So the mindset of second group is that we need to compete. If we can't compete, we're gonna shut in. If we are about to, you know, get a hand to hand, we're gonna compete in more. So we more like we, we try to compare ourselves to our neighboring country, which is I don't think that's a mindset or that's a main objective of becoming ASEAN. So that that's the key things that I um, that I see at at the moment that turn out to be uh, you know the key issues for the generations in ASEAN. Okay. So have your experience with you and the so what do you think about the new generation in, in the other than the um, I will see that they have different characters. Like I said, you know, all of them, most of them has a positive mindset. Uh, we're going to see a lot of youth program, a lot of exchange students, exchange program, things like that. Um, but the readiness and understanding it will turn out to be a very different perspective. Um, well, I'm just going to take out an example that I that I know. For example, the Laos PDR. I went to um, you know do the research and also the documentary for some time. Just so and get to talk to many people. Very open mindset. And say that we well we hear this is the ASEAN is cool. We're gonna well, we're gonna release the new things such and such. And in the same time, we're going to um, to hang on to that culture, which is really nice. Um, Malaysia, on the other hand, they don't we don't feel like they're competing all that much. We, they keep asking out themselves that you know what we're gonna do, what what jigsaw are we? You know, gonna put us in a big picture. Singapore is on the other hand, they've been competing since they were born, so you know, just just give them up. <laughs> this is a couple of <laughs> sorry uh, from Fili Filipinos, you know, Philippines. Um, well, I think they are a global citizen in the first place by you know by the country of the language and western style thinking. So I see it's a you know it's a more like a demography, but in the mindset that's become they already a a, a, um, a global citizen. Let me point out just a little bit a talk about a little bit about history. And this is one point I'm most concerned. I know I can speak here because we are we're not on air or anything, right? One key issue that this, the Thai new generation are encountering, that they are among the confusion of history conflict. The way we learn, ladies and gentlemen, the way we learn history in this country, through the history subjects, is more like a drama. It's not cause and effect. No analysis of any kind allowed in that class, which I do not like it at all. I hate that subject since I was young. I I was lucky enough that I would not in the social science you know, point of view or engineering and stuff like that. So I start study I start studying the history, um, you know, from the website, Wikipedia, you know, from the French and translated to English, and I read on that and understand, oh whoa, no, wait, wait. What you understood is all wrong. 
And that becomes the mindset of this generation today that Thai is the center of ASEAN. Everything we going to be a hub. And Thai is the center of the universe. We are the center of everything. Come on. <laughs> the globe is round, so anybody can be the center of anything. But the mindset, <laughs> right, am I? But the mindset is that what we see more like a like a me, not us. And then what we do, and if you remember the way we learned history in our class, you're gonna exactly what I said. We do not we do not allow, we were not allowed to to analyze the card as a thing, why it turned out to be this and that way. We were told how cool it was back then. And we were hero all the time. Mm. Am I right? Mm -hmm. I said it, and I'm proud. But what I can do now, well, I think this is the way we learn history. All the countries in this world all have the conflict with the neighboring country. But at we, as an example, it's not a good example that we can resolve it. We are still, you know, going the same square over and over once again. That's scary. <laughs> We have been to to the to the criticize to the history as well. And I, I believe that uh, one of the major issues also the history is also about all the whole issue back to, to the captain get you again. So <laughs> so uh, Captain get you to put the case and chat with us now. Uh, how how do we can get our American uh security uh, with the new generation or how about they should have the first thing about this topic? I'm going to ask that, are we going to continue and condemn our new generation? <laughs> um, if you're asking me about the uh, yeah, home security sector, you know, perhaps the perspective of the new generation, uh, I think we as the, the member of the, uh, the Office of National Security Council, it's been very hard for many years um, to go to universities, college, um, to tell how important the city is for Thai people, for everyone. And uh, as I observe, it's not there is no any sign showing that they're going to be more interested in the into a maritime issue, no matter what kind of se uh, sector they are. And even security, I think they will get them at the uh, first, second, just, you know, at the conference or meeting as end. And, uh, but uh, I still confirm my understanding that unless they just, you know, exposed to the environment that the very time is just going to impact their life, their lifestyle, their living, their li on a daily basis. Uh, otherwise, they're not going to, to, to be care about it. And so I make a different approach. I uh, get along with a uh, Dr. Guardian say that I'm going to pursue them with the maritime economy. Do you know what? In Singapore, the virtual economy sector is very, very big. And if you, if you, you know, you care about your future, you train yourself very hard to get a job in the virtual sector, you know, you're going to be very rich. And yes, you know, the response is quite positive because it's getting close to what they are at the moment. Now we do care about what are we going to have, what are we going to eat, you know, what are we going to spend the night life, you know. And so money is, you know, it's quite important. And I don't understand. And so if I want them to care about maritime security, I'm going to take them care first on the maritime economy. And then I, I think it, it starts to get work. And we just, you know, keep continuing. Our, our job uh, about about this issue, and uh, I think I'm answering your question. Your question is all about this. Sir. About this. 
Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.